Hey there, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a burner boy and a sharing type Afro beats in FL Studio. If you're new, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. All right, so before I break this beat down, let's take a listen, then we're going to take it apart. Alright, so we're going to be starting with the drums, and this is how the drums sound. So the drums were played with this pattern right here. This is the kick. This is the rim. The rims were layered to give it some weight and make it sound a bit heavy. And then this is a hand drum percussion. And this is also another hand drum percussion, but they are tuned different. Like if you look at the pitch, you can see this pitch right here. And then this is just normal, then this is just pitched up by a couple of cents. And then when we listen to just the drum pattern. So right here we have a few samples. This is a hi-hat sample. And then right here we have an open hat. And so together they all sound like this. And the reason why I just don't have uh, this hi-hat roll in the pattern as a pattern clip, because I need to stretch it out to be on tempo. So if I zoom in, for example, right? If I zoom in right here, and then you can see the time is very, it's very minimal, but it's actually time stretched to fit into the tempo of the beat. Hey there, if you're still struggling with making Afro beats, I'm inviting you to my focus group. It's a four weeks transformative program where I'll move you from basic to badass. I'll be hosting live classes two times a week covering the core topics that you need to know to make really good sounding beats. And you can ask questions during the live lesson and I'll also demonstrate the answers live for you to see and learn even better. And of course, I'll be giving you assignments after each live lesson, which I'll personally access. And the best part is that you get to be a part of a very helpful community that will push you to be a much better producer. And then you also get access to my exclusive learning resources, which are only made available to my premium learning students. After this transformative program, nothing about your beats will sound basic. So if you feel it's time to transform from basic to badass, hit the link in the description below or the link in my bio to sign up. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a mail or send me a DM on Instagram. We start on the 15th of July. See you on the other side. Cheers. So next, we take a look at the chord progression. Now the key of this beat is actually in F sharp minor, where I transpose it so I could play it on all the white keys in FL Studio. And the progression for this beat on the minor scale is the one, six, three, seven progression, all right? So when I open up the pattern, they're actually layered, right? You can see I have analog lab V, the celestial presets with three celestial presets, and this is how it sounds. And this is how it sounds. And then right here, we also have another preset in analog lab V, the outer space signal. You can always search for the preset using the search um, tool right here. And see how it sounds. So together, when they're played, and they're also running through some effects right here, because when you layer sounds, especially when you layer pads or chords or most elements, really, you want to make sure that they do not clash in frequency, and that's so important. And that's why I have an EQ right here cutting out some of the low frequency in the pads. 
and in the chords. You can see have that happening right here so that they can actually coexist sound heavy without clashing in the frequency, okay? And you can also see I did some volume balancing as well because I actually want them to sound really complementary, okay? You don't want one overshadowing one so much, okay? So you can see they're well balanced in loudness level and that's something to consider when layering. And so this is how it sounds with drums. So the next thing here is an ambient melody. The ambient melody was played using analog lab as well, the synth wave splits, and this is how the, uh, the ambient melody sounds. And then when I play it with the chords, So the ambient melody has a lot of sustain to it, so you don't want to play the notes to be too long, okay? So unless if there's this particular feeling you're trying to get, the note length can change the vibe of the melody, so you have to also take care of that. And also you can see, I also try to adjust the velocity, because I did click this in with the mouse, I didn't play it with a MIDI, instead of just having it sound straight or true. And the good thing with ambient melodies is that they do actually help fill up space in the beat, and they're not usually the most pronounced sounds you hear, they just help add more vibe, they're kind of like ear candy sometimes if you play them right, and also it's best to keep them simple. You can see, if you even reference the original song by Bronner Boy and Ed Sheeran, you can hear the ambient melodies are so simple. Same thing with this production right here. Very simple, very minimal notes, not many notes going crazy here. So the next time we're going to look at is our lead melody, all right? The lead melody was played by Purity using the bright mallet presets on that bell and percussions and it's also routed through the mixer where i did cut off a lot of the high end and also use the waves one up driver to even make it sound a bit duller okay i didn't want the, the kalimba to sound too bright if i turn it off this is how it sounds it sounds quite bright when i turn this on the effects on you can see now it sounds more dull and more full. how the frequencies exist in the beats can change the vibe. Sometimes you want a bright sounding lead melody, sometimes you want a dull sounding lead melody. So long as it, the vibe is just right. So you have to make sure you experiment, try to experiment using something as simple as EQ to just cut out some high end or even maybe boosting some high end sometimes. Now this is not mixing, this is just basic sound design. Okay, this is just basic sound design. You're just trying to be creative with EQ and creative with some effect processing, okay? So this is how it sounds on its own. I want to play with the beats. So the next sound which exists in the hook of this beat is the strings, all right? This is how it sounds. It does help to build a little bit of tension in the beats and it exists mostly in the chorus for that particular reason. And it was played with Cork Treating Extreme. Cork Treating Extreme is one of my favorite VSTs, the viola and cello presets under the string section. If you click the string section, you can find it right here. That's, you can just hit the search bar and it's going to bring it out, okay? And there's also a simple processing going on which is just EQ to cut out some of the high end. And if I turn that off, and when I turn it on, so you can see I did a lot of cutting the high end for this beat because I wanted to dampen some sound. So when I play it in the beat, this is how it sounds. And one thing you should know is that most of the melodies that are being played do actually follow the chord progression. So when your chord progressions are right, the melodies most times are going to come out good. And you can see these are just simple notes. You can see there's nothing crazy going on in the melodies that I've shown you so far. And this is for professional artists that are doing it at the topmost level. They do keep their melodies really simple, more simpler than you think. And they do not try to go too crazy. All right. So when you're having your own productions, do not try to impress. Of course, you should do your best, but do not try to do the most 
um, complex melody structure. Try to keep it simple most times, and the beat is always going to bang. What matters most times is your choice of sound, all right, and having a good chord progression. When you have a good choice of sound, a good chord progression, most times in melody, it's not how simple, it's going to be very catchy. So right here, we're going to look at the bass. The bass is really simple. It's actually an 808 um, sound. So this is just how it's played if I play it on its own. All right, and the bass didn't come in until the hook section, okay? So when I play it in the beats. So now we're going to look at the log drums. Now the original beats by Burner Boy and Ed Sheeran did have log drums in the chorus or in the hook section. And it's becoming more and more common to find some log drum elements in Afro beats itself. Um, and the log drum was used not really as a bass element on its own, but more as percussive elements, okay? And if we play it, So, and what was used to play it was just the regular log drum in FL Studio log drum presets. And I did this, and I did actually do some tweaking. And if you liked your log drum to sound like this, you can just copy my preset right here to make it to get it to sound like this. But typically, it doesn't sound like this most times. So, when I play it in the beat size sounds. So now we're going to looking at another interesting section, which is the vocal chops. These vocal chops, I got them from Splice. So it was actually reversed, and then I have some processing running through. It's a compressor to even out the peaks to make it sound so compressed. It's actually over compressed. If you see what's going to trash all the way down to minus 3 dB, all the way to 6.4, it's really over compressed, all right? Just to get the peaks to to clamp down, all right? And then some reverb to give it more of the ambience and some delay as well to stretch it out. So if I um, turn off the effects and then play the normal sound. Then when I reverse it and I turn on the effects, And I, all I just did was just cut out a, a portion of it, okay? I didn't use the whole thing. So when I play this on its own... And I also did the same thing again in the, in the hook section. And then let's hear it sounds in the beats. And then I also have another vocal chop right here, still from Splice. All right, so I've actually done a video on how to use different samples in different keys and tempos to fit into your beats. Um, I'll link the video up here for you to watch or maybe in the description as well so you can watch that. It was one of my recent videos at the time of making these videos. So when I listen to just this sample, so there's already some processing going on, some EQ to cut out the low end and the low mid frequencies, all right? And then we also have some reverb as well to give it more of the ambience feel. So you can see that does help fill up the space. So vocal chops, synth parts, synth strings, ambient melodies, they do help fill up the ambience of a beat and give you more life, give you more texture without you necessarily playing new notes that can sometimes be counterproductive to what you're trying to achieve. So right here, we have some drum rolls. And these drum rolls were from, I 
Hemz and um, Fresh Beats. So this is the Dodger drum roll kids from Hemz. So I think it's free. You can find out on YouTube. Just Google, just Google or search on YouTube Hemz's drum roll kids. I think it's free. And then right here we have another drum roll from VegBeat, but this is, I think it's paid. This is a premium kit from VegBeat. Also another drum roll kit from VegBeat as well. One thing to know about using drum rolls and transitions is that when you're moving from main sections, all right, let me make this bigger. When you're moving from main sections, like let's say from pre hook into hook, all right, into verse, all right, so make sure that you don't use too many varying sounds. Okay, try to keep it as consistent as you can, especially when you're repeating the other half of the song. Like, for example, the pre hook right here is the same, the drum roll before the pre hook right here is the same drum roll before this pre hook right here. And the drum roll before the, this hook, that is the main hook itself, is the same drum roll before the main hook itself. And then the drum roll before the um, final part of the hook, right, is the same thing with this guy right here. So this helps build consistency in the track and also doesn't make it sound boring. So try not to have different drum rolls running all around in a very random order. It's going to make even the listener and the artist um, you just throw them off a bit, okay? Because even though you're trying to make your beats interesting and try to spice it up, we still need some familiarity in your production, okay? We need parts that makes us feel like we already kind of know the song, even though we're just hearing it for the first time. So now let's take a look at the song structure for this beat, that is the arrangement. Now this beat is less than three minutes. It's about two minutes, 30 seconds, okay? And the song structure is really simple and straightforward. We have an eight bar intro, which has lots of ambience at first. This is how the intro sounds. just repeats twice, all right? Then you have the pre-hook without the kick drum. We have it slowly building up, okay? Then builds up into the hook, which has bass and the kick drum. And then the first hook, it's actually 12 bars. It's not uncommon to see that. A lot of times, hooks for most songs, actually the first hook, if it's up to two or three hooks, usually range from eight to 16 bars. Sometimes it's even up to 24, depends, but most times you see eight to 16 bars for hook, right? So 12 bars is not uncommon for the hook or chorus of a song. And you can see to help create variation, a lock drum was introduced, then a reverse synth string that is in string played here also introduced to help create some variation because we don't want to hear just the exact same thing running for straight 12 bars. So you need some elements to come in at some point to help build either tension or help calm us down, just to help us ride the highs and lows, okay? And you don't need to add too many elements to that, just a few elements, maybe some bass, bringing in the bass or taking out the bass, or bringing in a synth string or taking out the strings or bringing the lead melody or taking out the lead melody can help you do, do just that, all right? And then we go back into the verse, but now the verse does not have a kick drum, just, it even has a bass, but it does not have a kick drum. Then we get into the pre-hook, which is pretty much the same arrangement as the first. And then when we get into the hook right here, okay? Now the hook is longer. The hook here is actually 16 bars, unlike the first hook, which was 12 bars. And it's actually complete. And you can see that this runs longer in the second hook, right? That is this one here, right here. This lock drum section has the, the strings is just one, but right here is two. So it's doubled. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then right here we have the outro, a defined outro. Now, not every song has a defined outro. Sometimes the artist still do sing in the verse or in the chorus, and then the song just fades out. But this song actually has a defined outro. And the outro lasts for about eight bars. <laughs> And there are so many ways you can define your outro. You can just take out the drums, or you can leave just your drums and the bass, and you can just strip the elements down, okay? Most times that's how it works, you strip down the elements to make it sound interesting. You can play maybe a solo towards the end. Maybe you can just do some key movements, play some keys, or play some guitars, or just some elements, just do some riffs here and there to signify that it's about to come to an end. So if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to leave me with a thumbs up so that people that need helpful videos like this can easily find it right here on YouTube, all right? I remember Sir Classy, this is SC Toots, and don't also forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up with more tips, tricks, and helpful tutorials like this. Cheers.